How's it going, everybody? Today I wanted to bring you yet another division video, this time a high-end slash exotic PvP build. Uh, I know there are a lot of those videos out there showing you how to build in different ways. I've got my particular twist on it, and I'll go through my reasoning uh, why. Why I've made certain decisions, uh, why I use certain weapons, certain talents, uh, and why I've got certain roles on my gear uh, that you might otherwise roll for something else, um, especially if you're listening to sort of more mainstream YouTubers. I certainly don't want to waste a lot of your time today, so we'll jump straight into the build video and then I'll tack on some uh, PvP gameplay at the end. And considering I'm not a PvP focused player, I think the number of kills that I got on the streak that I went on in that last stand gameplay and a couple of games after that, um, you'll be really happy with. So like I said, I don't want to take up much more of your time, so let's jump straight into the build video. So as you can see, this is a 3 exotic, 3 high-end build. I've got a Barrett's vest, a refresh mask, a short bow knee pads, Specialized backpack, skull MC gloves, and a nimble holster. I'll go through each of these pieces in detail, and I'll take out the mod so you can see them at the base level. So this is a Barrett's vest, 1852 native armor, with 1185 stamina. Into that I put a 267 firearms mod with 3305 health, and I also put a another firearms mod, this time 265 with 3149 health. The Barrett's vest, as you may or may not know, it's one of the exotic pieces, and it actually has three talents uh, that are active at any one time. So no skills on cooldown increases skill power by 10%. One skill cooldown increases damage by 5%. And two skills on cooldown increase your armor by 10%. So all very situational, but as long as you know how to activate these talents when you need to, uh, and with certain skills, I think this is one of the best-in-class vests that you can get right now. The major and minor attributes that I have on the vest are 16624 health, which is pretty much max, 9.5% exotic damage resilience, 52% ammo capacity. Uh, I'll go into detail when we look at the character sheet why I think this is really important, uh, and this is obviously uh, best in class, so if you can get these two, uh, I would certainly go for them on your gear, and ammo capacity just make sure that I don't run out of ammo uh, mid-fight. Let's have a look at the mask. So my mask is a refresh mask. This probably differs from what you've heard on other videos. I know a lot of people are pushing the Tenacious Mask, um, but uh, Refreshed, which basically gives all healing is improved by 30% within the last health segment, is really good in PvP, where your uh, health is never full unless you're running towards a battle. Um, so as soon as I start taking damage and I drop into that last health segment, a med kit or a heal is going to give me uh, you know an extra third uh, healing, which is, uh, in my opinion, is invaluable. Uh, my major and minor attributes on this are exotic damage resilience, uh, EA, so EDR at 10% and 10% damage to elites. I would like this to be burn resistance, um, but so far this is the best roll mask that, mask that I've been able to get. If I can get another version of the mask, uh, again with EDR, uh, but maybe they can leave from this to free, then I'll definitely be rolling this to burn resistance. It's 994 native armor. And if I just pop out the mod for a second, 1247 firearms, which is getting up there towards max. And inside of that, I have a 265 firearms mod with 2856 health. Onto my knee pads. Uh, pretty much everybody and anybody uh, who's running a PvP build should be running shortbow knee pads, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, the fuse time on grenades is reduced to 0.2 seconds, which is really good. It means you can throw a grenade, and unless that person jumps out of it at that exact second that it lands, they're more than likely going to be hit by that. Um, invaluable in PvP, in my opinion. Uh, the role that I've got in this, as you can see, is 1271 stamina, which is, I think, one off max. Uh, and inside of that, I've got a 261 firearms mod with 2839 health. And then I have a prototype performance mod with 6% first aid self heal. Uh, the attributes on this, I've got 16381 health, is, which is getting up there towards the max health. Uh, I do have 33% shock resistance, uh, but I also have disorient and blind death resistance. In these two, I would really, really like to have uh, burn resistance, but again, haven't been lucky. But I've got to keep farming to see if I can get a better pair of these uh, shortboard championship pads. Again, best in slot. Um, if you can get some shortboard under championship knee pads, get them by running Madison Field Hospital. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you'll get them to drop at the end. Or maybe do your weeklies and get them out of an exotic cache. Do whatever you can to get them because they do really complement any PvP build. My backpack, won't be surprised, is a specialised backpack. So it adds 200% of firearms and stamina to skill power. Uh, I just demod this for a second. It's roll to firearms, 1195, uh, which is, you know, it's okay, it's not bad. Uh, and into that I've got a 260 firearms and a 3056 health mod. Then I have two 6% first aid self heal mods. 
my attributes, and this is where, again, I'm going to differ from a lot of other YouTubers, a 16% stability. Uh, because I'm not running striker, I've become really, really comfortable with the amount of stability that striker gives you right off the bat. Uh, as you may know, striker as it's two piece uh, is going to give you 20% stability. So I decided to roll stability on here. You know, I'm tanky enough with, with these numbers. You know, 337,675 is not bad, uh, and you know, getting an extra, I think it's like 16,000 health on that. I didn't really feel like it gave me as much value as having 16% stability. As much stability as I can get pretty much means I can keep my gun on target. Whereas running something like health, yeah, it's going to give me a little bit more health. But this build for me is all about hitting your target, hitting them quickly, burning them down quickly, and then getting out. So again, 16% stability, 48% ammo capacity. If you don't want this, then you know, by all means, feel free to roll it for health or for skill power. Both of those are really viable attributes. Uh, but on my build, I've rolled 16% stability. I think the max is something like 165 or 17%. Um, so yeah, my gloves are Skull MC gloves. Again, if you're putting a high-end exotic build together, these are best in class. Uh, damage is increased by 16% when no set bonuses are active. So because I'm not running any gear set pieces and I have no gear set uh, bonuses active, I'm getting 16% damage all the time, uh, unconditionally. Um, so you'll see when we go through my weapons, my damage is quite high um, because of the 16% buff that I'm getting from the Skull MC gloves. On these, I've got 1285 assault rifle damage, 5.5% crit hit damage, 8% enemy armor damage. If I could have a perfect pair of gloves, or what I would consider perfect, this would possibly be switched out for critical hit damage. But as it stands, I needed to roll assault rifle damage because assault rifle damage is going to give me flat damage across the board so long as I'm using an assault rifle. And as you can see when we go through the weapons, the assault rifle is my weapon of choice for this build. So yeah, if you can get these gloves, get them. Uh, Farm open world bosses, open up exotic caches, do your weeklies, do whatever you can to get to these because these are very integral, just as much as the Barrett's vest and the short bow knee pads to this build. All the other pieces that you can get, uh, so the mask, the backpack and the holster, feel free to switch those talents out for whatever you want. But in my opinion, you do need the Skull MC gloves, you do need the short bow knee pads and you do need the Barrett's bulletproof vest. So it'll be no surprise that my holster is a nimble holster. Um, pretty good stats across the board, 1267, which is like five off max, uh, 1203 stamina, uh, 1239 electronics, so really good, 950 native armor. Uh, again, the max is around 1000, 1001. Um, and obviously nimble is gonna give me 2% max health for every one meter that I run in a, in a cover to cover move during combat. And then major attributes are reload speed. Again, people might want to go for I think the 8,000 health that you can get in a holster, in my opinion, and for my PvP builds and for my playstyle, I really prefer the reload speed uh, along with uh, an undergrip. It makes my reloads really, really snappy. Again, works really well for me, but feel free to play about with it for your build. Roll it for health, roll it for crit chance, whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. So onto my weapons, it'll be no surprise that I'm running a lightweight M4. Uh, if you were lucky enough to get the blueprint a couple of weeks ago, um, you can roll yourself you know, several versions of this like I have down here, each with perfect rolls for different activities. This is my PvP lightweight M4, and its talents are responsive, uh, so damage is increased by 10% when closer than 10 meters, which you pretty much always are during combat. Uh, unforgiving, some missing health segments increase your damage. One missing segment is 10%. Two missing segments is 25%. Again, really, really important, especially when you're always taking damage in uh, PvP. And then in the free slot, competent. So weapon damage is increased by 10% for 15 seconds after using a skill. So if I pulse or heal, as soon as that's active, I'm getting another 10% damage. As you can see from these talents, they're all pure damage talents. So damage increased by 10%, damage increased by 10%, damage increased by 25%, and then damage increased by 10%. So the only ones that are uh, conditional really are these two, but so long as you play well, so long as you manage your skills, so long as you manage your health, uh, you're going to get a lot of damage out of this build. Because of the Skull's MC gloves, I've got a really high damage roll, you know, 23.8k on an assault rifle is really good. Uh, that's going to go up with all these talents active obviously, and then I've got 20% enemy armor damage. This isn't really important in PvP, uh, it makes a, you know, a small value compared to when we had 70% armor. But in Last Stand, I think like that, where you do have uh, NPCs roaming the map, a little bit of extra enemy armor damage is not to be frowned at. My secondary is an M700 Carbon. This isn't really a PvP weapon. Um, I know a lot of other people would prefer to go with 
possibly a secondary uh, assault rifle or maybe a submachine gun, or maybe even a shotgun or maybe you know, even an Irving MDR, especially on PC where these are really, really strong. I like going with the M700 Carbon. It gives me a little bit of versatility at range, um, but most of the time I'll be using my primary, uh, so I won't go into the details of this, but I will take you into the details and uh, how I've modded my lightweight M4 now. So my lightweight M4 is modded with a 12 time scope, almost perfectly rolled, You know, 18% headshot damage, 3% critical hit chance and 4% crit hit damage. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, don't stack into headshot damage for PvP. Uh, but on PC, this is especially important because I think ARs have a quite a high native headshot damage multiplier, where the SMGs don't. You know, I would definitely roll Brutal off and maybe invest more into crit hit damage in an SMG. My muzzle is an Omega rifle suppressor. 18.5% headshot damage, 4% crit hit damage, and 3% crit hit chance. So again, pretty good roll. My hand stop, and again, this is where my preference to this build differs than other people. Um, I've got a hand stop, which is 30% reload speed, optimal range, and crit hit damage. I prefer the reload speed because I find with this combination of the reload speed in the holster and the reload speed on my grip, as well as a little bit of reload speed on my magazine, that I can reload and be back shooting at someone before they can. Other alternatives might be to go with a crit hit damage uh, underbarrel. Entirely up to you. Again, this is just my preference and my recommendation for this build. You might want to invest elsewhere. Don't get me wrong, this reload speed and the reload speed and the holster will inflate the DPS figure that you see on the home screen. So, to some degree, ignore that. But yeah, like I said, reload speed is my recommendation on the grip. Um, but feel free to change that up for a crit hit damage grip if you needed to. And then my magazine is a... Extended mag, of course, with 110.5% magazine size, 5% reload speed, so again, just a touch more reload speed. Um, I don't really have a lot of crit hit damage, so investing in crit hit chance is a bit of a waste. And then 5.3% rate of fire. Any additional rate of fire that I can give an AR, uh, even one with quite a high RP RPM, uh, is going to benefit you because it just essentially means that you're getting more bullets on your target quicker, so you're doing more damage. So yeah, extended magazine with reload speed and rate of fire is my recommendation for this AR. And then my pistol, uh, not so much for use in Last Stand, uh, but useful in the Dark Zone, is a First Wave X45 with harmful and responsive. Uh, this is a fairly high damage pistol, um, and it's got a lot of rounds in the magazine. Isn't as high damage as something like an M1911, um, but harmful and responsive work quite well um, in PvP. Um, so this is my PvP pistol of choice. So that's my build in terms of gear. We'll go through the character sheet next where you can see uh, where all these major and minor attributes uh, come into effect uh, and I'll try and explain why this is good, uh, why certain uh, skills and certain attributes are strong and why you should invest in them and uh, yeah, and then we'll flip it on some gameplay. So ignoring the primary attributes because you can see those at the top and everybody knows what they pretty much do, let's have a look at the weapons. So weapon damage, so my weapon damage is at 23,772, so that's the damage when I'm at optimal range with uh, with the current weapon on all bonuses included. Crit hit chance is at 11.5%, so not particularly strong. Uh, my pulse does give it a slight buff, um, but crit hit chance is not where assault rifles are particularly strong at. This will be a lot higher if I was rocking an SMG, because I think you've got around 20% extra crit hit chance on an SMG. Again, because I'm not investing into crit hit chance, I have no interest in investing in crit hit damage. Um, but where I, what I have invested in is headshot damage. So my primary weapon is doing 112% headshot damage, which on PC is quite good. My stability comes into play here, so that's 16% stability. It almost feels like I've got uh, striker on. It's not as much as striker, because like I said, striker you can get 20%, but 16% st 16 stability without having to invest into that on the mods uh, is really strong. Stability is also really strong if you're running the Bullfrog, um, because obviously you're penalised for modding that weapon with stability. So any inbuilt stability like this 16%, or maybe the 20% that you get with Strikers, um, is going to be a huge buff to that weapon. Range is 29 metres, um, so again because I'm running an, uh, an assault rifle, uh, range is a lot higher than it would be with an SMG. Uh, and you'll see from one or two of the kills, it's still quite viable at, at quite a range given all the damage that we're getting. Reload speed, so again, reload speed, uh, as I mentioned before, is an attribute that I've invested in on this build. 
It reduces my reload speed on my assault rifle to 1.86 seconds, which is really good, which is essentially a 55% reload speed bonus. So that basically allows me to reload 55.5% uh, faster than you are if I'm fighting you in a PvP encounter. The all weapon damage bonus, and this is the 16% from the Skull MC gloves. Obviously we know from looking at the other talents uh, that the weapon damage bonus is only going to be higher. Uh, the Assault Rifle Damage Bonus from the Gloves is at 1285. You could get this higher if you rolled your Assault Rifle Damage into the 1300s. And then next up, uh, Combat. These don't really come into play for PvP activities, um, but like I mentioned earlier in the video, because we've got um, Elites in uh, Last Stand and we've got Veterans in Last Stand, uh, a little bit of damage to Elites and a little bit of enemy armor damage uh, won't go miss. Um, not super important, so I'm just going to skip over these. But I think it's fairly easy to understand why you know, the, having these two attributes on your gear isn't all that bad. So my skill power is 118,500. That's not bad. It's not amazing, uh, but this is a more of a DPS PvP build. Uh, this gives me a, you know, an adequate heal, especially with Refreshed. Uh, and it gives my pulse uh, just a little bit of a buff. My survivability, so toughness is 337,675. Again, not bad at all, uh, considering I only have two items rolled into the stamina, and then the rest of the items I got rolled into firearms with all firearms mods. Max health is 230,000. Again, not bad. And my armor is at 31.73, which is not amazing, but it's also it's not terrible. Uh, health and energy regeneration doesn't really matter for this. My exotic damage resilience is at 20%. Uh, which essentially means that Seeker Commands don't normally one-shot me anymore. Uh, grenades don't do as much damage as they do. Uh, for any PvP build, I would invest in around 20 to 30% exotic damage resilience, resilience if you can. Uh, 20 is more than adequate in my opinion, uh, but I know people who would like to spec a little bit more to avoid being double-naded or to avoid uh, you know, multiple Seeker Commands dropping them to the knees. Uh, I'm really happy with this, and I, I recommend that you invest in this in your build. Shock resistance 33%. I would like burn resistance as well. Currently I don't have none on this build. Um, but as I said when I was going through my gear, if I could roll it on the mask and the knee pads as well, I would be more than happy having those attributes to be shock and burn and get rid of the rest. So that's my builds on the character sheet. I'll take you through my skills and then my talents and then we'll flip it up to some gameplay. I use pulse. You might want to use something else like a flame turret, a shock turret, uh, seeker mine, uh, flashbang or anything else that matches your playstyle. I like to continue moving through the map. I don't necessarily like to stay in one place for a long period of time. So I tend to go with pulse and heal on the majority of my builds. Uh, with my skill power uh, and running the base pulse, which is back up in 36 seconds, which is quite important for me proking competent, uh, gives me an extra 12% crit hit damage and an extra 12% crit hit chance. Uh, you might want to go for one of these other ones, but as you can see with the cooldowns, you know, they're much longer, which means uh, my competent, my damage increasing uh, talent on my weapon isn't being propped as often as I would like to. Um, so yeah, I go with the base pulse, so the recon pack, and I go with overdose. So overdose is going to give me the best overall heal compared to these other two. If you look at these self heal values, of course these are slightly supplemented by the self heal mods that I've got. Uh, but I like going with overdose, uh, and sometimes I decide to run booster shot if we've got a healer in the team. But 99% of the time I'll be running Hovid Overdose, which is going to give me quite a large heal. About half of my health, like I said. And when I'm in my last health segment, because of the Refresh Mask, it's going to get a further bump from there. The cooldown is not too bad, 52.9 seconds. The other ones do cool down a little bit quicker, uh, but they give nowhere near as much of a heal as Overdose does. My talents, again, you might want to play about with these. Change them to suit your playstyle. To give you a true reflection of this build, I've been running solo, um, so I decided to go with Adrenaline. Uh, Medkit heals over 10 seconds and will not stop healing when taking damage. I decided to go with Critical Save, so using Medkit when I'm low health, gives me a little bit of damage resilience. Uh, Tactical Advance goes hand in hand with Nimble. Uh, you'll see it a couple of times in the video, you know, I'll run cover to cover before engaging somebody. And that gives me more damage on top of all the weapon damage talents that I've got, uh, and on top of the gear set talents. Um, so as you can see, this build's all about da uh, damage in PvP. I run Precision, uh, which when I pulse hostile, gives them a base pulse effect, um, which again just increases damage a little bit more than it would. Um, alternatives to this would be Steady Hands, uh, 
on the move, but on the move isn't as valuable as it used to be. Or if you run as a team, I would definitely recommend Combat Medic. Uh, and then my last talent is One is None. A headshot hostile to have a 50% chance of not consuming the bullet. On PC, I can be relatively accurate a lot of the time. Um, not all the time, and it certainly depends on what I'm getting hit with. For example, shotguns. Um, but yeah, I run Precision, uh, and One is None on this build. Again, if you're not super accurate or you're on console for PvP, switch this out for something else um, because there are other talents that may benefit you more than this does. Um, so maybe go with Strike Back to reduce your cooldowns. Uh, or if you're running a fire turret, maybe go with Wildfire. It's entirely up to you. I decided to go through my talents and why I chose these. The only one that I believe is truly integral to this build is Tactical Advance. Uh, all these others are up for argument, up for uh, decision, up for you making uh, changes and choices that complement your build. But yeah, my build, Critical Save, Tactical Advance, Precision, and one is none. So that's about this build in its entirety. Uh, I've gone through my weapons, I've gone through my gear, I've gone through my character sheet, I've gone through my talents, I've gone through my uh, weapon mods. Um, I'll throw it over some gameplay uh, where you can see how this build performs in PvP. Try it out, especially if you've got the pieces. It's quite a fun build to run uh, and with a few tweaks it could be quite viable in PvE also. If you got this far through the video, then I thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for watching so far. And thank you much, very much for listening to me uh, rant on and get it, take you through my build. Um, if you did like the build, please feel free to leave me a like and drop a comment down below. If you didn't, you know, also let me know why, and I'll do my best to do better for next time. I try and respond to each and every person in the comments as quickly as I can. If you want to catch me streaming, catch me over on twitch.tv slash calstreams. Uh, if streaming isn't your thing and you just want to chat on Twitter, catch me at twitter.com slash cal4k. But for now, that's enough waffle from me. Uh, I thank you very much again for watching and for getting this far. I'll throw it over to some gameplay. My name's been Cal. You guys have been absolutely amazing, as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!